Hello, uh, today I'm going to show you how to finish your Eclipse installation so you can make a phone gap project and import them into Eclipse. Um, the first thing you should do is have Eclipse on your desktop so it's easy to find. Um, just go into Eclipse. I have a little bit of a different uh, version of Eclipse. Uh, that's okay. The reason is that uh, this is a lot harder to uh, configure. Um, but you should either have um, the Android Virtual Device Manager and the Android SDK Manager on the main panel or in window um, it should show up and when you do click on it um, everything should be installed or most of the stuff I didn't install the extras so I'm going to do that now um, if they are all there um, open up notepad the first thing I want you to do is write down Android SDK tools I'm going to delete all these paths okay um, most likely your Android SDK tools will be found in computer local disk C users your username and under Android SDKs click platform tools click the breadcrumb, breadcrumb trail top press copy paste paste it into here um, for tools just delete platform dash for Java home it should be under computer local disk disk C program files 86 and Java and then click Java JDK do not click the JRE because uh, it won't work so click the breadcrumbs again and that's your Java home and then Java bin just backslash and bin now ant ant we need uh, it's an Apache component to Eclipse we need it for uh, phone gap so we're gonna click our Eclipse folder and click plugins and click org.apache ant click the breadcrumbs copy ant home ant bin bin Okay, once we have that all down, we're going to go to Start Menu, right click Computer, click Properties, Advanced System Settings, uh, then we're going to click the Environment Variables button. Uh, forewarning, do not delete anything in here because uh, <laughs> Windows will fail to boot if you uh, delete some of these variables. Um, so I already had set some of these uh, we have you're going to create a new variable called ANT home and then you're going to take your ant home copy paste and click OK uh, I already had it also you're going to create a new one Java home and okay um, then there should already be a pre-existing path variable you're going to edit it um, you should have one or two things in there depending what programs you have running already uh, what you're going to do is just press semicolon after the last one and then we're going to copy and paste Java bin, ant bin, copy. and copy and paste Android platform tools and Android SDK tools. And press OK. Uh, I'm not gonna because I already have them installed. And then press OK. OK. Um, for those of you, for those of you that know about computers and try to use the variables, do not use uh, percent Java Home percent as the variable. Uh, it doesn't work. PhoneGap wants you just to put the absolute path. Um, okay. So when you open Eclipse again. 
Oh, actually, before we open Eclipse, go to Start Menu, Command Prompt, then you're going to need your phone gap folder. You're going to type CD, which is Change Directory, and I'm going to go to my phone gap 2.3.0 folder. You're going to change the directory to YLib Android bin. Okay, once you're there, you're going to press create. Okay, um, I already tried this. It should build, so I'm going to press create. Now, the syntax for creating a new project would be folder name, so I'm going to put test project. Then you have to, then um, Eclipse requires sort of a website um, domain structure for the second name, so you're going to put com test proj test proj. And then the folder name. Okay, it's creating a new project. Okay, now it should be created. If um, if that doesn't come up, it should say um, one of the following is missing. Then it'll tell you Ant, Java, or the SDK platform tools are missing. If that's a problem, that means you didn't set your uh, environment variables right. Um, just contact me. Um, but that should be okay. So now I want to import the project. So I'm going to go to File, New. Uh, Android application pro oh, not that one. I'm gonna file new project and then we're gonna click Android folder and then Android project from existing code browse uh, we're gonna go to the C drive and we're gonna click phone gap library Android bin and test project and just click the parent folder press OK and finish and you see it's there now a couple things before you could uh, make a project you're going to double click on Android manifest.xml we're going to scroll down to the bottom see how there's errors just change Android min SDK version to 8 and then go to project properties Android and click 3.2 uh, 3.2 is about a year and a half old now um, people who have older phones you can still build projects for older phones but um, you won't get some of the functionality you would with newer phone gap projects. Uh, 3.2 should be backwards compatible enough. Uh, just press OK, save, and you're OK to go. Um, you have to do that with every new project you create, but it's only about a minute. Um, so you're ready to go. So you're going to click on right click test project, run as Android application, and my virtual device comes up. Uh, if you don't have a virtual device set, just go to click the Android Virtual Device Manager, click New, make a name for it, new phone, pick a device, uh, I'm going to click the Nexus One, Target, Android 3.2, uh, and everything else should be okay, and that's good to go and let's just make sure this comes up it takes about a minute to boot up so just give it a second
Okay, there seems to be a problem. Uh, let's try this again. Let's do run as Android application. And let's see if this comes up. Uh, sometimes the Android virtual device hangs. Uh, let's just try it again. I'm going to try to uh, launch it manually to see if it's just a problem with my virtual devices. Okay, so uh, the reason why my uh, emulator doesn't start up is because my uh, Windows machine has a validation error. <laughs> uh, but it should work. I just compiled it to my Android device. Um, so that's about it. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you.